today, uh, this gospel, I think, evokes two responses from me. My first response is, how amazing. And my second response is, how sad. <laughs> uh, but before we get to that, uh, I want to um, tell you how bugged I am by something. It really bothers me. And if you work at Costco and you're in this position, please don't be offended, okay? But I hate when I go to Costco, I pay a larger bill than I wished I had, had to pay because you just get enticed to buy more. And walking out the door and those people that take your receipt and check it off and make sure you didn't steal something, you know? And I hate when I get to the door and I hand it to them, they don't say thank you, um, usually, not always. And the two of them who are working on opposite sides are having a conversation as they're doing their work. And I'm saying, hello, I just gave you my receipt. And I say to them, thank you, uh, you're welcome. No, they just keep chatting away and it just drives me crazy. Where is the gratitude for just the simple little things? Or one that also bugs me is when I come to an intersection in my car, and if I arrive a second or two before the car on my left, I have the right-of-way, correct? And they're supposed to let me go because I got there first, but I don't trust most drivers. They're on their phone, they're doing all kinds of crazy things, so I am always wave them on, go, just go. I flash my lights. And you think they would do such a simple thing as nada, nada. Drives me crazy. And although they're not doing anything mean, no, certainly nothing to, to me, but it's just uh, the simple gratitude for little things, you know, it makes a big difference. I was raised as a little boy, I was in Catholic school, and my parents taught it to me, but so did the nuns. It was like when you come to a door and there's someone around you, you open the door for them, especially if they're older or if it's a nun or a priest, you open the door for them. But I still do it, I'm 72, I do it for people half my age. It's just, isn't that what you do? It's just polite. And somehow that, that's missing, and, and it, it, it bothers me. So today I think we are blessed to get these scriptures about gratitude. They're about gratitude, and it's a, it's a wonderful thing to know in our spirit. In the first story, we don't have the, the passage before this that it kind of sets us up to understand this passage. But Naaman, he was non-Jew, he was a Syrian, he had leprosy, and when you had leprosy, it was so highly contagious, you had to leave your family, you had to uh, leave your house, you had to form a little community if you were lucky with other lepers. So these lepers who couldn't uh, spread it to each other because they already had it, they would go live in this little community. And people that loved them, like family members or friends, would come by and leave a pot of food for them and then run because they couldn't get near them. And they'd eat the food and go back to living with their community. So they, they were cut off, and, and they probably would die, rotting away their body little by little until they finally died. And it was very sad. So um, Naaman, he was a soldier, and he was, he was a very good one and very important, and he got leprosy. And so the servant girl of one of his mistresses uh, goes to him. She was Jewish and says, look at if you go to Elisha the prophet, uh, he will help you get healed. And so Naaman didn't really know what to do with that. So she comes back and says to him, if you go uh, and wash yourselves in this river, and it was not a very important or big river, it was a kind of a muddy little thing, uh, you'll be healed. And he said, I don't think so. He was really uh, enthralled with himself. He was much too important. How could I wash myself in that dumpy little river? I should have to do something big and important because I'm big and important. So the girl pleads with him and she says, look it, if the, if the prophet told you to go do this big, big, big thing and then you'd be healed, you will do it. But he's asking you to do a simple little thing, a humble little thing. Why don't you do it? Listen to the prophet. So he says, all right. So he goes and does it. He Jumps into this river seven times, by the way, that magic number, so that tells you something right now about that story. Seventh time he comes out, his flesh returns like a baby's flesh. But not only does he get healed physically, he gets healed inside so deeply. 
he goes to the prophet and he says, here, let me bring you these gifts. He says, no, no gifts. No, but I must have to bring you these gifts. He was so grateful. He says, no. He makes it quite clear. God doesn't have to get paid. You don't buy God's love and mercy. God just gives it. But what we do need to do is be grateful. So he says, because he experienced like a total conversion. He says, well, then will you at least let me take two loads of this dirt here from here because I want to worship on this dirt. This is sacred ground, and I'm going to stop worshiping these other false gods, and this is my God now. Your God is my God. And he goes through this total conversion. So similarly, in the gospel, it's not one leper, but ten. And they're in this little community. And one day, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He's going to his cross, slowly but surely. And they see him, and they start to cry out. They didn't ask for healing. They just asked for some pity. What would that have been? Maybe a little food, a little water, uh, some fresh clothes, something comforting, a kind word. But what he says to them instead is, go show your... Now, you need to know that this is a phrase that was used after somebody was healed. From leprosy, just that uh, if you were cleansed, you had to go get it verified by the priests. He would look at you and do a ritual of purification, cleanse you with water, whatever, incense, and, and then say, you are purified, you are cleansed, you can go back to the community. But Jesus doesn't heal them first. He sends them first to the priest as if they were healed, and they weren't. But on the way, they realized they were healed. And so one who realized it rushed back to Jesus, fell on his knees before him and thanked him and thanked God. And so Jesus says to him, ten were healed, weren't they? Where are the other nine? And then he says, to anybody who's around, could only this foreigner come back? Now, the, the foreigner was a Samaritan. And Samaritans and Jesus, we know the Samaritan story, the, the Samaritan uh, that comes along and finds a Jew that's dying on the road, having been robbed. We heard it a couple weeks ago. And a priest and Levite pass him by. But this enemy, the Jews and Samaritans were enemies. This Jew helps him because he ended up being truly a neighbor, even to an enemy. So here we are again with that story. One Samaritan and nine Jews. And the nine Jews, you would think, would have come back praising God, but it wasn't that. It was a Samaritan, an enemy, a foreigner. He comes back. So Jesus declares, it's the last line of the gospel today, your faith has saved you. And what this story reveals is um, the importance of gratitude. And not just a, a, a pleasant and a thoughtful thank you and you're welcome. You know, I don't ask people at Costco to genuflect to me or, or you know, start singing to me. Just say, thank you, you're welcome. Simple, simple thing. But this man comes back praising God and falling on his knees before Jesus in total gratitude, profound spiritual gratitude. And what Jesus proclaims in that statement is that not only did he receive a physical healing like the other nine, and he felt gratitude, but he also had a much deeper conversion. He, he praised God. He praised God. You know, this week I went for my two shots. I got my flu shot in my left arm because I'm right-handed, and uh, it didn't hurt, and it, it, it didn't bother me afterwards. So go get it. Get your flu shot. And I got the uh, other COVID one, the third booster, the Omicron or whatever that's called, um, Omicron, uh, and that didn't hurt either. But I left so grateful. I really did because, you know, um, I think, as I've told some, I may have had COVID the very first week that it appeared in Seattle because I went up there to do my cousin's wedding. Uh, I got really sick that week, um, but I'm not sure. But I'm not aware of any sickness after that in these two and a half years. But I said to myself, wow, how blessed I am. I mean, first of all, I go to CBS and it's free. What's free in life anymore? 
I got two free shots. And although it doesn't guarantee me 100% that I won't get COVID or that I won't get the flu, but I feel protected. I feel safer. And that's a wonderful feeling to have. So I left CVS in my mind. I'm thanking uh, the FDA. I'm thanking the government. I'm thanking CVS. I'm thanking the wonderful lady there at the pharmacy that did the shots for me. And thank my God that, that you know, I, we are just so blessed in this country and have so much opportunity and so much to be grateful for. And I know that that's an important thing because it bugs me so much when I don't see gratitude even for simple things. But when we have a gratitude that's profound, that digs way down deep into our spirit and we find God in it, that's what Jesus is suggesting today. Your faith has saved you. As we come toward the end of this church year, Christ the King is the last Sunday of the year, and then in early December or November, December, we begin with the first Sunday of Advent and begin another new church year. We have a lot of things lifted up to us, and today it's gratitude, deep, deep gratitude. And I would propose to you that Jesus wasn't saying this because he needed to hear it for himself. Jesus was a profound spiritual guide and teacher. He didn't need people to thank him. He was going to do the good no matter what. But he felt badly, I think, not because he didn't receive thanks, but because they didn't give thanks. Because I think that he saw and realized and always would profess this, that it's important to be a thank people. We're a Eucharistic people. You know, the word Eucharist itself comes from the Greek word Eucharistine. It means thanksgiving. We come here on Sunday, yes, to praise God, yes, to offer our, our prayers and our needs and intercessions, uh, but it's primarily, it's a banquet of thankfulness, Eucharistine. We are here to say, God, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for this. And the more that we acknowledge our gratitude and live it and express it and share it, the bigger and better our life becomes. And Jesus knew that. He knew that. And if there was sadness in him, it was not sadness for himself. It was sadness for nine people who didn't get it or only got a teeny portion of it. But this foreigner, he was healed outside of himself and inside of himself. And he found God in all of it. As we gather in this Eucharist with this incredible story, these stories of gratitude. It reminds me of, of one of my favorite spiritual writers, mystical writers uh, from back in 1250, 1260, Meister Eckhart, a good German Dom, uh, Dominican. Uh, one of my favorite phrases that he has in his little book of sayings that I have of him. He says, if the only thing you ever say to God is this, thank you, it is sufficient. And we all need to learn those two words, thank you. And while we're at it, we can also say you're welcome.